from Gwent in Wales, the number eight seed, Panic Attack. Going for gold again. Now, Panic Attack Gold, you are up again in your first battle. Rock, Chronic, and the Corkscrew. Do any of those worry you? Corkscrew. Why? Smash the and then flipper flips over and then the crushes covers. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> it's not looking very good then, is it? No, not really. All that gold's going to peel off, isn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Probably got lots of that. <laughs> that's what you get if it's cheap, you see. Champions of Robot Wars, the second wars, it can lift twice its own weight with a very powerful push, but self-writing is very slow. From Herworth in Darlington, rocks. A razor-esque rock crusher. Hello, 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 hello rocks oh, team, how are you? Very well, thank you. Good. What have you got for us? All right, yes, um, we've got a hydraulic machine, bottom light razor. It's not, it's not very pretty, but it sure is mean. A big steel hydraulic jaw on wheels, two-wheel drive from two motors and van tech control, slow at just five miles an hour. From the borders in Scotland, corkscrew. A completely revolving body with six blades. The Scottish team here from Selkirk. The borders. The borders. As I say, and yes. as you say. Now, John, we remember Corkscrew from last time. You've completely rebuilt it. Now, you probably would recognise the kilt that it wore, not Thank a you. skirt, been told. But apparently, they're so close to the weight limit that even this would push them over the edge. A total 360 degree killing zone with a Sremek, but at 20 miles an hour top speeds, it is difficult to control. From beer in Devon, Chronic 2. Twice beaten in the heat, very animated, lovely looker. I heart hey, uh, beer, it says on the back of your robot. You'll be drinking loads of it if you don't get through this first fight, Chronic 2 team. You are up against Panic Attack, which is now 24 carat, corkscrew from the Bordeaux, and over there, Colin Rock's robot. Never mind. <laughs> then your man in a skirt in it, we've got to fight. <gasps> well, if I tell him that, it won't just be robots at war. I'll say sleeker this time with a more powerful flipper and a stronger frame and shell. Two flippers act as self-riding mechanisms, but the bottom panel is missing because it was overweight in the qualifiers. Roboteers, stand by. Let's have a look at the Roboteers together. Chronic 2 there on the left, Dave Lang, captains. Rocks on the right, Colin Sivis is the captain. The Corkscrew family on the left-hand side, the Heatley boys and Panic Attack with Kim and Michael Davis. In the arena for the house robot, shunt with the bulldozer and the axe and Sir Killalot with the pincers and the churning lance. Three, two, one, activate. All these machines have featured in the past history of Robot Wars. They've got lots of experience, pace and weaponry. Rock's coming in. Chronic 2 trying to lever up the flipper there. Rock's with the beat. The crush. Oh, look at that attack from Corkscrew. 99 kilos in at speed, 20 miles an hour. Slamming into panic attack side panels, which are designed to stop anything getting in underneath. That was a mighty attack from Corkscrew, and then they come again and causing major damage to the Chronic armament there. And you can see that one of the Chronic two wheels now left exposed. Down goes the pit. And Corkscrew goes with it. Oh, what an end for a machine that had started brilliantly. The Corkscrew have gone. And now Rock gets a grip on Chronic 2. In the middle of it, Panic attack, took the brunt of that huge first attack from Corkscrew, you've just seen them, the men in kilts, they've gone, this is Chronic 2, flipping rocks, oh, and is that something coming out of rocks? Colin Sivers and his family look on, Carl and Jack, but I think rocks is leaking, hydraulic fluid it is, you can see it pouring out, that's a major problem because without the hydraulic rocks simply will not be able to self right all on the arena floor, it is pouring and the ref not quite right to get in with a quick count. And count rocks out. They've hit the rocks. They've gone from...
composition in the background, Panic Attack is taking a slam, which is unnecessary now from Chronic 2 because we know they're heading through. Do, do they not realise that Rox has been counted out and that Corkscrew is in a pit? What's going on? You don't need to do this. You are both safely through. Panic Attack and Chronic 2. The audience says they always do once more. Rox flies through the air. Captain Colin Sivers. Happily laugh at his own machine's destruction. Oh, there's the angle grinder on the side. <laughs> and Carl looks on. 11-year-old schoolboy, and that's the end for Rox. Safe at last, feet. To kill a lot Francis. Corkscrew spin out of the competition. Rox bring the major oil leak and slide out of the competition which leave us with former UK champion Panic Attack and Chronic 2, they go through! Nibs, you love it. Turn yeah. around so we can see your gorgeous face, otherwise your mother will kill me. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> did you love it? Yeah? Yes, you did. Show me the damage. Mind, it stood up to it very well. There's not a lot, is there? There's a little bit under here. Big damage there. A bit of damage that there's a little bit of wood there, I noticed. I, I do advise people against using wood on these robots. I really don't think it's very no, sensible. It's actually wood. It's just looking. <laughs> it is worth Mrs. Rocks. Now, <laughs> and one little bend down there. There you are, you can see it. So there's not much damage despite all the flipping, dipping, dipping, whatever else happened to it. But it was a grand fight. And even more entertaining was watching you lot enjoying it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, it, I have to say, it went very flat out here, after you lost, after you were in the pit. Come round, come round. Because it just seemed so unfair. Well, I think it's unfair too. I would love to see the footage of somebody pressing the pit release button. It was bad timing, wasn't it? Because literally, it was going down, did. you were going you in. the pit release? Yeah, I can't remember. Nobody. What? Are you calling for justice? Yes. Are you? I want to see the film. Are you? Yes. You want to see your lawyers? No, no, no lawyers. You want to see the Just judges? I'll... I you can't show really me see the... anything. You show me the footage of somebody pressing the pit release and we'll take it as losers as we... We will organise it. Good. John, Lewis, Lawrence Heatley, you wanted to see it. There you are! Chronic 2, quite clearly, presses the pit release. And you fell for it. Bye-bye. You've watched the tape. Yes. <laughs> we have Who watched the tape. Who pressed the button? Chronic 2 pressed the pit release button and we fell down the pit. Yes. So we have to eat humble pie. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have any humble pie here today, so I brought my trusted bacon and roll with me. It's simply a bat for you. Simply a bat. Humble pie. <laughs> I would apologies to the viewers. Chesham in Buckinghamshire. A kill. Their mission to boldly go where no robots gone before. Talk me through it, because you've got a lot of unnecessary gubbins, haven't you, here? Right. Hammer? Yes. Spikes? Well, yes, this, spikes. This will crush a strawberry at one stroke. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, so we're starting to see where you're coming from. No, 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 no. Lifters. Disconnected chain. Chain, yeah, which, yeah, totally, chain, yeah, which goes nowhere. Chain, which goes nowhere. Lifters. On. Lifters. Lifters. Which using... can lift what weight? Um, what do we reckon? Let's get off our ice pudding. Get off our ice pudding. <laughs> A two millimeter plate steel box with 36 volt motors and four weapons, two front lifts, one whacker, one spinning disc. Not one part costs more than a tenner. From Drybrook in Gloucestershire, Reptiron the second. Double trouble here from two good weapons. Oh, look, so relaxed. Now, Reptiron the second, you have two weapons, don't you? Yes. Not just one, so greedy. Yes. Why so greedy at the expense of all that weight? Um, well, last time I got hit in the opposite end of what the weapon was, so I thought about the weapon both ends. <laughs> I like your logic. It seems to work. So quickly, which are your weapons? Lift and scoop at the front. Yep. And we have a kinetic blade at the back. Four-wheel drive, aluminium shell, the disc's electric, the scoop's CO2, very resilient, could be a dark horse. 
Hazelmere in Surrey, Sabretooth. Yeah, but I'm not too sure about the bite, Philippa. So you were saying you've got no weapons? Yeah, what happened in the preliminary rounds, we lost our disc and it sheared the axle. We didn't have time to get a new axle, so we have welded the old axle up, but it won't obviously take the power of the disc. So we put the back wheel in and dropped it on the ground. Yeah. And we got 12, 12 horsepower of push now. I mean, okay. I reckon we can break the land speed record for robot hearing, because this will do 70 miles an hour. More problems. The aluminium body has thin gas pipe armour. Presumably the petrol from the weaponry is still on board as well and flammable. This sabre tooth could soon be extinct. From Oxford in Oxfordshire, Terahertz. Back for a fifth tilt at the title. The Terahertz team, frightfully sophisticated, very intelligent. What have you come up with this year? Um, it's an amazing robot. It's a very fast, fast repeating pneumatic uh, axe mechanism. Right, and knowing you two, it absolutely will be. Absolutely. Now, you reliable. want to know who you're fighting? Yes, who Eight Hill. Sorry? Eight, Eight Hill. Oh, right, yeah. We're up here on the second. Okay. And those lot over there, Sabre Two. Right, okay. <laughs> no, yeah, they use nasty. Which one are you most worried about? I haven't seen Eight Hill fighting, but Spinner, always worried, a bit worried about Spinners. Let me give you a piece of advice here. Don't worry. The double-headed axe has always promised much, but in four attempts they've never really gone beyond the heats. Highly aggressive, hyperactive, unpredictable. Roboteers, stand by. So look at the Roboteers together. Akil on the left, Christoph is the captain, Sabretooth on the right, captain by Gabriel Stroud. And then on the left-hand side, Reptor in the second, Gordon and Cheryl Townley, and Terahertz, John Reed and Dominic Parkinson in the arena. Growler. Very pacey. Very damaging. And shunt. The old trusty bulldozer blade and the axe is still Three, deadly. Three, two, one. Activate. Big question here. How long Sabretooth can survive without any weaponry? Terahertz comes in with the axe already dropping down on Akil, which is a, a novel looking machine with the Whacker and the spinning disc and the front lifts and terahertz like a metronome out there counting down the seconds to oblivion for Aiken and dictating the pace of this mash it and mix it melee. There are the controls of Akil. You could see they were worried. The great pace of Sabretooth, but going nowhere it would seem. Oh, what's come off? That's part of Akil. One of the spinning discs, I think, has come off. Sabretooth, meanwhile, sort of um, just. Uh, uh, hmm. Well, doing nothing. And there are the controls of Reptor in the second. Just put a glimpse there of Gordon Townley. Down comes the axe blade of Terahertz. Knocked out in the heat three times previously. Doing a lot of work here just in case it should go to a judges. With that axe coming down. Very strong pneumatic axe once again. Gordon Townley with Reptor in the second trying to get things going. Just saw uh, Cheryl there with him. What's happening here with Reptor in the second? Has it completely stopped? I think it has. And I think Terahertz is about to drag Reptor in the second onto that flame pit. The axe has gone straight through the aluminium shell and that's why it's grappled on. Reptor in the second, bronze looking, about to be blackened by the flames. Held in there by Terahertz. Always dangerous flames to electronics and Sabretooth we wondered and worried about all the way through. They're being counted down. And I don't think Reptor in the second is going to last much longer. Well, Sabretooth, all the damage really was done before they came into the arena. They know it. Gabriel Stroud, Robert Pickford and Polly Parr Stroud. Nine-year-old schoolgirl, they're out. And I think Reptor in the second, unless they can get things moving very, very quickly, going to follow them, which leaves Terahertz to create as much damage as it can to A-Kill, but have perhaps a little bit later on in this heat. Don't forget, only one machine survives the heat to go through to the series semi-final. A-Kill leaving things strewn around the arena floor by the second. Bang goes Sabretooth. Up to 70 miles an hour on the ground, maybe. Um, but you don't look too impressive through the air, to be honest. Let's hope they come back, though, next time. Went out in the uh, heats last time as well, Sabre 2. Taking punishment. Look at that axe of Terahertz. When they get things going, it can be so deadly. Reptor and the second have been very disappointing. Was it the flame pit that burns out the electrics? Did they have a, a radio signals problem? I don't know. But that's the end of Reptor and the second. 
back on and the heats again. Counted out by the ref box, so the two machines that will go through. A kill is just for the team. And Terra hurts. Oh, Growler, what are you doing? Let's not get Kennel. Don't go down the pit yet. Get him on a leash, someone. Quickly. Shunt gets rid of Sabre soon. Let's, let's mop up everything out there, boys. Quickly, house robots, because Growler to me seems to be on the prowl. A kill through. Not too sure how they did it. Sabretooth out. Well, Sabretooth and Raptor on the second crash out of the competition. A kill didn't do much, but along with the big hitting terahertz, it lives to fight another day. Well, I I I am, may have missed. You know when you said you were going to go really fast. Well, it didn't was it work, faster did it? than the speed of it light? So Is that why I missed it? it? Yeah. Yes. I thought no, that just... might have been the case. So right, now, work. show me. Show me. Where's Wait, the damage? The damage? Well, the damage so was kind of, the back yeah, round up here, wasn't it? And then kill her. Whatever uh, hello, hello, hurt. we're over here. Terra all stove the top in and it's... But other than that, there's nothing else. No there more damage are. than that. So, not a great deal. Just didn't work. You guys did take... Come round here, come round here. You guys did take a right bashing. No, we didn't take a couple of holes. And there's a brute. But did it actually get any of the guts? There's another one in there. No, look. it's all airspace underneath. And that was all air axe, wasn't it? Yeah. It's quite well, impressive. Well, there's a little dent in the top from Trent. Oh, bless them. Um, it was quite impressive because sometimes those axes, you know, they're kind of all that's, trousers that's, and then nothing it's else. It's be one of the best axes there is. Mm. And it can be, it's only running at half throttle. Now, what's occurring? <laughs> well, when course through it, you rip the whole side off and a bit of the front. Yeah, so round the back here, there you can see the damage cam. That, we weld that bit on and we've already welded that bit on. Okay, so they've already done that, so you can see it's meant to end up looking like this. So they need another front bit on there. Is it doable? Yes. So, a kill team, you're into bonus time now. Yes. I don't know how much longer that bonus time is going to last. Because you're up against Panic Attack. Yeah, what a lovely robot. Uh, we wish them all the best. We're panicking. We'll make you panic. Yeah. The thing is, though, this could be one of those things where the fates have coincided, uh, because literally, how on. have you ended up driving? Um, well, it was an advert Chris put in the local paper, because he, he was after some mad bloke to answer it, and I, I crazy enough, someone, I did. I wanted, <laughs> someone, I wanted someone from outside Robot Wars to have a go. What, did, the, what did the ad say? Assistant wanted the robot wars. Do you want to be a driver? Something like that. I had five people. I had to interview them. How scary. <laughs> and, and he lost. I mean, one. What did you, ask, did you ask them? If you're up against a panic attack, what would you do? Oh, uh, yeah, I was saying, look, you will be driver. Because I've done it before. You're going to be a driver, you know. And they all sort of go, oh, 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 oh. But he was the only one that didn't. He said, yeah, I'll do it. I can do it. And he said, that's good. Can you do it? Are you changing your try. mind now? We'll give it a good try. <laughs> One phone call you might regret. Maybe, but hopefully not. <laughs> Never failed to reach the series semi-finals. Kim and Michael Davis and Panic Attack. A kill. The rookie driver then, Gordon Johncock, with Chris and his son Ryan Dell. Roboteers, stand by. In the arena for the house robots. It's a killer lot. He really is gruesome, isn't he? Meet him on a dark night. No, thank you. Shunt. Prettier. Three. Fit. Two, Who am I kidding? One, activate. How much damage was caused to panic attack, really? Was it only superficial from that first round against rocks and corkscrew? A kill. Lost weaponry as well. In fighting Reptiron. A kill trying to piggyback up on panic attack. Zero ground clearance. You see where the side flanges there for panic attack. Nothing can get in underneath. And I wonder about the actual potency of a kills weaponry they sacrificed some weight for extra weaponry and that means i think that panic attack have extra shovability and they've got a very good driver in kim davis one of the best ever in robot wars but that, that's not a weapon i'm sorry hey what is that 
What is this on top, Aiken? Is it a, oh, a mighty mace? No, uh, a heavy, horrendous hammer? No, no, no. Uh, oh, oh, a stupendous, slicing, cutty thing? No, it's nothing, boys. Really, is it? What can you do now? A kill. Ooh, a bit tentative. Look at the concentration on Kim Davis's face. Champions in Robot Wars the Second Wars. They defeated Cassius. Robot Wars veterans, amongst you will remember that. They kill almost up on its side. And there's one of the weapons locked there. I think it has. One of the spinning blades seems to have been bent and has locked. A kill is on its side. You're seeing there the control pod, Gordon is at the controls, the telecommunications engineer, Chris's team captain, works on the AA patrols, Ryan, schoolboy, looking on, more homework needed for a kill I would think, dangerously near the CPZ, must have crossed into the CPZ because Shunt came out with the weaponry, and puncturing some of a kill, and again that front blade if you could call it that, it looks like two dustbin lids squashed together to be honest, Probably isn't, but the most expensive item on this was the paint. Everything else cost less than ten pounds. A kill about to be pushed delicately aside by panic attack. The crowd want the pitch. They're going to get there, which A kill just digging in, but no more. Brave attempt to get this far. The road to glory ends in the pit. Seats. Kim and Michael Davis go through again. Oh, well. Panic attack go through after what I can only call a scintillating fight. Let's hear it for panic attack! I call that scintillating, but I was only joking there. We didn't show any highlights because there weren't any. Oh, I'm sorry about that. We were very lucky to get this far in Robot Wars yeah. and she wasn't really up to it, but we had a great time. It's been marvellous, absolutely marvellous. It was great. I mean, we were fighting against the star. Yeah, you're fighting and we were at the East Ryan yeah. and Gordon will remember it. That's been marvellous. Well, we had a good bout earlier with the uh, Mega Earths with his axe. So yeah. I mean, that was what we wanted. We it's that bit of yeah, carnage, yeah, a bit of mayhem. Was, that was basically exactly. Yeah. That's what we like yeah, on Robot so Wars. Nice. Let's hear it for a kill. I think he was talking about terror hairs in the book. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Kim, that was so boring. Yeah, it's brand new. The thing is, uh, it was built two weeks before we came up. And it's, it hasn't been tested. Yeah. You know, it's so... This is where we've been testing it, and it's... It is. It's slow, it doesn't turn. We're not happy with it. So, any readjustments for the next fight? Well, we're going to go out and take the skirts off, so it should turn a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, put some screws in the wheels, maybe it'll get some traction. Yeah, because there's no traction up there. It's no, a real slippy floor, isn't it? It is. Okay. You, you exceed. Mm -hmm. You're a former UK champion. Do you think you'll be able to reclaim that crown? Yeah, of course we will. <laughs> no. <laughs> Come on, optimism, optimism. Uh, no. <laughs> The way it's going now, I very much doubt it. Well, you're through to the heat final. Go and get some work on that robot. We want to see you go all the way. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it! Panic attack! Thank you. Together up there in the controls box, Dave and John Lang and Mike Gardner. Terrorists. Splendid team, John Reed and Dominic Parkinson. Lots of experience. Wonder if they can go further this year. Roboteers, stand by. See who's in the arena for the house robots then. It's the sergeant. Ready to get out a marching drill or two. And growler. Three, two, one. Activate. Now they come. The weaponry. Is more potent from terahertz, boy and how. Look at that, slamming down on Chronic 2. Looks a very good machine here, terahertz. I think they'll give Panic Attack a run for the money in the heat final if they get there. And from the evidence of the opening seconds of this battle, they'll get there because Chronic 2 knows it's got to flip and flip fast simply to survive. It's trying to get that flipper in underneath, but Terahertz has a zero ground clearance. It has the side skirts 
like Panic Attack, it nudges Chronic 2 into the CPZ, which means that Sergeant Bash can now attack. Their wheels are locked together, side by side. Terahertz coming in from the rear. Chronic 2 just getting away, turning, running into Terahertz once again in the centre of the arena, slamming across there. Terahertz is giving chase now. It knows that it has Chronic 2 on the run. Chronic 2 with the little yellow um, wobbly bits on top. Not really doing much and trying to run away and advised. Terahertz back on the attack, still on the attack. Waiting, waiting. Down comes the axe. Why isn't the axe coming down? Is there a problem with the Terahertz axe? John Reed and Dominic Parkinson, why aren't they using the weaponry? Chronic 2 is on the flame pit. Trying to get itself off by using the flipper to gain some purchase, but I think the Chronic 2 have been immobilised. A vent of steam from underneath gives a little bit of life, but there's not much movement in Chronic 2 from the two 750 watt motors. Oh! And damage, it is only superficial. The yellow wobbly bits come off. Courtesy of Growler. Growler. Absolutely destroying Chronic 2. Dave and John Lang and Mike Card now, they're all engineers. It's a splendid looking machine, great fun, but oh, it's met its match here in Terahertz. How much damage did Growler cause? The pit release activated. If I was you, Chronic 2, I'd make a beeline for that pit because Growler's definitely on the prowl this time. What a frightening new house robot for Robot Wars the Sick Wars. Growler. And his owner, Mr. Psycho. No, 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 John Reed and Dominic Parkinson. You're not Mr. Psycho. Or, or are you? You're some sort of nutter to have a go at Sergeant Bash in there. The house robots mean business next time. You will be going through the heat final because Chronic 2 has three seconds, two seconds, one second. No life left in Robot Wars to Sick Wars. Out they go. And Terahertz survives. And Growler comes in. A little nibble and a munch. And it drags Chronic 2 almost off to its horrible lair. Spits out the part he didn't like. Sergeant Bash, who I think has just had a little look over to Terahertz and a bit of a wink as if to suggest, I'll be waiting for you next time. Growler grabs Chronic 2. A bit too late now. Dave Lang to turn Chronic away. Terahertz in there. One last push. It's Six. on fire. We know it's out. Hot under the collar. No. Cool as you like. Whew. So's their machine. Chronic 2 put up a good fight, but it's not enough. Terahertz go marching on. I'm just as sad as you. Yeah. What happened? We just couldn't get underneath him. And the axe was just too powerful. You got underneath Growler? That was quite good. I think you're the first robot to do that. I was quite impressed with that. And you were taking on all the house robots, really? No, it's got to be done, mate. Yeah. No. Where'd you go from here? Because that looked a bit one-sided to me. It did. I think we'll try and come back next year and um, see if we can kick their butt. <laughs> hey, hey, you want revenge? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, then you're not going to take this line down, are you? Nope. No. <laughs> this is what we like to hear on Robot Wars. Ladies and gentlemen, Chronic 2! At last, a robot that does a bit of damage. It's about time, isn't it? You've been, you've been competing in Robot Wars right from the very beginning. Yeah, five years now. And. It's always been a bit pants, really. <laughs> really? And all of a sudden, you've got this weapon which is fairly awesome, and you're through to a heat final. Yeah, we, we don't normally go around squashing hedgehogs, but in this case... <laughs> Do you think you can go far in the competition? Uh, who, know, who knows? It just... Who knows? Depends who you get, the luck of the draw. Mm. But it's, it's working really well at the moment. I'm really happy with it. At last, we're, we're getting somewhere. You won't um, go very far if you keep having a go at the house robots. Though. You had a good bash there, didn't you? Yeah, it's a risky game, isn't it? <laughs> and they've got long memories, those robots, yeah, I tell you. Yes, well, yes. We, we were thinking you were going to help out Chronic but against the house robots, but we thought, not, not <laughs> diplomatic. <laughs> we do Listen, let's hope you go all the way. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank Sarah Hertz! So what do we think about this one up here on the crow's nest? 
Well, Panic Attack, for all its experience and winning background, has looked lacklustre to me so far. I know Kim Davis is brilliant at the controls, but what sort of weaponry power does that have nowadays? Terahertz, we've seen it, of course, do great damage to Chronic 2 early on. If I had to go with my heart, I'd go with Terahertz, but my head says that Panic Attack will have its day. Don't panic! Go for the attack. Hey, it's nearly all over. But don't make the tea just yet. There's something much better brewing, Mrs. What should be an awesome heat final. Panic attack. Let me remind you, Kim and Michael Davis have never failed to reach a series semi-final on Robot Wars. Terror hurts. Let me remind you, John Reed and Dominic Parkinson have never had such potent weaponry with Terra Hertz. Roboteers, stand by. Matilda's in the arena with the flywheel and the tusks. Shunt's in there again with the bulldozer blade. Three, two, one. Activate. Activate his calls. Kim and Michael Davis were concerned about panic attack. They've left the side skirts on. They've left the skirts on, they were talking about removing them, they're left on and Terahertz is slamming it with the axe and I don't think Panic Attack has the manoeuvrability to get away and Terahertz is causing damage straight away at the controls there, John Reed. Look at this, it's systematic. Oh, they are battering Panic Attack into submission. One blow after another raining down and Kim cannot do anything about this whatsoever. He knows his machine is sluggish. The metal is being ripped away. The armament, look at that weaponry and power of terahertz. Certainly one of the most destructive machines we've seen in Robot Wars, the Sixth Wars. Only two seeds thus far, Chaos 2, the number five, and Sting and the number 11 seeds have crashed out of the competition. But Panic Attack here, the number eight seeds are in danger of following them. Shunt is in there as well. The bulldozer looks a little bit tattered. Has a great split in it, you see? Down comes the axe. This has been one-way traffic throughout this heat final. Well, panic attack. Oh! Off comes the top armor. And now the electronics, the electric motors exposed. Matilda's flywheel causing all the damage there after terahertz had initially prized that lid loose they're queuing up please ref bot count them out and look at this almost in reverence to what panic attack has been in the past no one is going in there to create more damage yet they're counted out i think he knew it was going to happen didn't he maybe it's time now to completely rebuild panic attack will he have to Will the house robots, Shunt and Matilda, totally destroy? Oh, 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 the drop zone's being lined up. Surely not for Panic Attack. Have some reverence. That's better. Put it on the floor, flip the floor. I don't like it. Cruel, nasty, delicious people. Panic Attack from the floor, flipper. That'll do, surely. Away it goes. Sturdy, nothing came out from the exposed innards. Still they want the drop zone. Still they call for the drop zone. Oh no! Shunt, how could you? How nasty! How wonderful! What a lovely... <laughs> Kim's trying to get away. The fight's it's another day. It's too late. Your time is nine. Oh, we've got suspended up there. I'm told it's a washing machine, a household washing machine to come crashing down on you. Kim Davis and Panic Attack. No! Cease. The end. Bang. It's all over now.
Panic attack, the eight seed, they go out. Terra Hits are through to the Serie semi-finals. The eight seed has gone. You've been having problems with your robot, though, haven't you? Yeah, but I think we got it fixed. We, we actually did. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly did get it fixed. Well, it, it, it took off great. As soon as they said activate, it was a cross, but uh, that big axe. How does it feel to have a washing machine dropped on you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were weighing it and thought, God, that's heavy. And then we looked and thought, that's awfully high. <laughs> so we thought, nah. So we backed off and thought, oh, go on, we'll let him do it. And, uh, it's uh, still working. Is it working? It's still going. It is, it's not broken, it's, it's still going. Well, it's a dent, few dents. Yeah. Never mind. You've got to come back again, Kim. Oh, yeah, of course we are. Still panic attack. Yeah. You're a great sport. You're a great competitor. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, ex-UK champions, panic attack! <laughs> oh, brilliant robot, haven't you? It seems to be working again, doesn't it? The axe is awesome. We, we, we turned it up specially for them. We cranked the pressure up. Yeah. Just put a little bit more in there. And just, for, just, for, just for the ex-champions. It's kind of high repetition as well. It's like yeah. constant, That's it. constant, yeah. constant. Yeah, we, we, on our previous mission, we got a spike. We always got it stuck. We just hated that all the time. Yeah. So we just decided to put this broad blade axe on it so it doesn't get stuck. But we just keep on hitting them. It's an amazing robot. Everyone's yeah. surprised. Great. Yeah. Well, it's working now as it was supposed to work before, for the first time, so <laughs> yeah. that's what it's supposed to do. It's the ferocity of the beast. It's so ferocious. Yeah. That's him. But we, we were worried. I mean, Panic Attack are the, the ex-champions, and uh, that was a tough one, too, so we're very glad to have got this far. And let's hope you go further. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it. Terra Hurts! Hit either man who has to sweep up the floors. We've made the right old mess on Robot Wars. Bye-bye.